I want to begin by asking a question. So who in here has been on a cruise, would like to go on a cruise, likes the idea of, cru of a cruise? Hands up. Anyone? Okay. I don't understand any of you. No, listen, listen. When people say to me, oh, it's like a hotel on the sea. And it's got all these amenities and facilities and you can eat all this food. I have seen the Facebook and Instagram reels, all right? I've seen that old lady sit in that chair as that chair moved from one side of the deck back to the other. That's not fun. And I've seen the videos where it's like one of these outside lower deck cabins. And I, I have seen it where the, 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 the window was sky and then sea. No way are you getting me on that thing I, I will go to the aquarium to be under the water. I am not being in a boat when I, no, mm -mm 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 -mm. Maybe I'm putting you off cruises, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. My daughter's like, I would love to go a cruise. I said, well, when you get married, you can do it. Because I ain't doing that. I remember when we got married almost 20 years ago. Uh, my wife's American and I'm Scottish, and she, we were going to the small Scottish island for our honeymoon, and we had to get a ferry boat to the island. And I vividly remember Sarah was sitting there, and she was just flicking through a magazine. My hands were gripping the side of that ferry boat. Dear Jesus, this is it. I didn't think it would happen so soon, but I'm coming home. The irony is, I was a lifeguard and a college swimmer. But I would look over that side, and when I can't see the bottom, no, I'm not happy. From the moment the ferry left, I'm like, oh, Lord. It was perfectly calm. I couldn't see where we were going to end up. I'm like, I am not happy. I am having to trust these people up here who I don't know in that ship. And if there's ever a storm. I remember once being on a ferry from France to England, and... I mean, the weather was awful. And I was like, well, this is it, Jesus. I'm coming home. I'm coming home right now. Um, I was so anxious. I don't like boats. I don't like ferries. I'm okay just if it's calm, but if there is any type, any storm, that's it. I'm just waiting for the trumpet. Lord, take me home. It's a pretty good analogy for life. I think there are seasons in life when it seems pretty calm. Family's good, relationships are well, job's doing well. As the young folks would say, good vibes. It's all good vibes. But then there are other seasons in life when it feels like, in fact, it is a storm. When maybe there's issues in your family, maybe between you and other members, maybe with your kids, or maybe finances aren't great, maybe something's happening with your job, or you can put in whatever, but a crisis or a chaos or a storm is in our life. And I don't know about you, but those are the moments when I'm like, I want off this boat. Get me a new, in fact, don't, don't give me a new boat. I want to be on dry land. And I'll try and change things to make it better. I'll try and take charge. I'll take control because I don't like this. I'm anxious. I'm stressed because of the situation or circumstance that I'm in. And isn't it so often in the storms of life, you just didn't see them coming? It's like they come in from this side or this side, and suddenly you're living with something, you're like, how did I end up here? How did this happen to us? Why are we going through this? And this morning, no, this afternoon, third service, all I want us to do is this. If you are a follower of Jesus, what do you need to remember when you're in the storm? What do you need to remember when you're walking through difficult, tumultuous, chaotic moments in life? When that crisis comes upon you, follower of Jesus, what do you have to remember? So this morning we're going to look at a story that, again, if you know Jesus and you've read Scripture, you may know very well. It's a story about a bunch of people in a boat. And a storm comes. And they make some decisions, and one of them in particular makes a decision. And we're going to see what Jesus does in this moment. And hopefully it will speak to each of us about how we can walk through the storms of life. How do we get through when there's anxiety, a 
crisis or a chaos in our life. And so and maybe in the moment you're walking through something, or maybe you've just come out of something, or maybe you're like, you know what? It's pretty calm at the moment. It's nice. But if you orbit the sun enough, you know it's not going to be like that forever. The reality is something's going to come. And Christian, how do we walk through those moments? What do we need to remember? So let's read Matthew 14 this morning. Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Some of us know this story really well. But it's about the followers of Jesus, his most committed group, the disciples. And what Jesus says to them to do, and what happens to them, and one in particular. And we're going to put a twist on this story this morning. Because we're going to see what Jesus does in the midst of this storm. So let's read it. Matthew 14, 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross the other side of the lake, while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up in the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from, far away from and for a strong wind had risen, and there were waves, or they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. Then Peter called out, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified, and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Let's pray. Father, as we come to these words this morning, we pray that we will be changed. God, we pray for your spirit, breath of God, life of God. Holy Spirit, will you speak to every heart this morning? Will we go out differently from the way we came in? God, would you change our soul? Help us to trust you more, to be more like Jesus. So we invite you into this moment, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what do we see in this story? Jesus says to his followers, get in the boat, go to the other side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pray, I'm going to dismiss the people, off you go. That's all he tells them. Now, the lake they were in was about 8 miles wide and 13 miles long. So you could go around it, but it was actually easier just to go across it. So they get in their boat, off they go, and then it says this storm came upon them. Now, the, the lake was about 700 feet below sea level, surrounded with mountains on one side. And what that means is a storm could happen real fast, real quick. So what that tells us is when they probably got in that boat, it looked nice. They had no idea the storm was coming. And off they go. They begin to cross the lake. Everything looked good. And then the storm came on them like that. And chaos ensued. Now there's three things we need to say about this story. Number one, Jesus told them to go. Jesus said, get in the boat and go. Number two, three of these guys were fishermen. Peter, James, John, we know they were fishermen by trade. So if anyone could handle a storm, it was these guys, it was their job. But here's the third thing we need to realize. For these ancient people, the ancient Israelites, and, and for a lot of the other religions around them, the sea or the deep wasn't just a physical thing, it was a spiritual thing. The deep sea was called chaos. It was actually spiritual. So let's translate that for you and me. Jesus said to them, get in the boat. Go across. Jesus says to you and me every day, pick up your cross and follow me. Follow me. And obedience, for those of us who know Jesus, we do that. Don't we? We say, yes, Lord. And somewhere deep in our heart, we believe, and that means life will go well. That's not the promise. Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. And we say, yes, Lord, and it's going to be a great day. And nothing's going to go wrong. 
and everything's going to be peachy. But look what happens in this story. They faithfully and obediently do what Jesus says, get in the boat, cross the, the lake. But in the midst of obedience came a storm. Folks, we're not promised an easy life. Pastor Eric says this all the time. When we are faithful and obedient to God, it is a trust, a faith that we take. But the one thing we're not promised is easy life. Obedience is trust in God when it's not easy. So they get in the boat, they're going across, and they said, the storm comes upon them. And the second thing, as I said, we need to see is that three of them at least were fishermen. In other words, when the storm came upon them, they would begin to try and save themselves. Change the sail, row this way, go that direction. No doubt they would try and do everything in their natural selves they could do to make a difference. And don't we do the same? When there's a crisis in our lives, when something comes and we have anxiety in our finances, our family, relationships, whatever it may be, who do we so often look to first to solve it? Us. Well, if I just change this, if I cancel them, if I get this or I do that, naturally that this is where we look to first, it's us. We will save ourselves. But the third thing, as I say, we need to see is the deep was not just a physical thing for these people, it was spiritual. And so often we forget in many of the crises as we go in life, there is a spiritual element that God wants to speak and God wants to do. But too often we think something has gone wrong because we're in a crisis. Have I sinned? Have I done something wrong? Because we think following Jesus, it should be easy. And so often when it happens, we're going to try and save ourselves. But we don't realize that there's much more happening in that moment that we need to be aware of. There's a young woman called Lim. She lives in Singapore. This is her story. She says, I graduated in 2008 right in the midst of the global financial crisis. It took me two years to land a job. During those difficult job hunting years, a friend from church told me that my identity was not in my job. She reminded me that whether or not I had a job and whatever work I did, I was God's child. The work would give me fulfillment, dignity, and the ability to earn money. It was not ultimately what defined me. And she was right. Because four years later, my company folded and 60 of us lost our jobs. It can cause much anxiety, especially if you're the breadwinner on the family. Perhaps the hardest part is accepting that all that is happening is totally out of your control. There is absolutely nothing we can do. And she ends by saying this, when our well-being is threatened by external factors that are outside our control, God remains good and faithful. He is there even in the darkest moments, though we may not always sense his presence. So here's Peter. The disciples, they're in the boat. They're faithfully doing what Jesus told them to do, and a storm has come upon them. They've probably tried to save themselves. It's not working. And then what does Matthew tell us? An apparition comes towards them. A ghost. The word really means a phantom. That's what they thought. And they're all freaking out. And now this kind of amazes me. I'm like, how long have you guys been around Jesus? How many things have you seen him done? Do, sorry. He's done miraculous things and healings. And, and still we're like, oh, is it him? And Peter, I think in that moment, just voiced what the others were feeling. Is it really you? Is it really you here now in this storm? And then Peter tests Jesus. Hey, if it's really you, call me to you. Make me walk in the water. And Jesus says, come Peter. And as we know from the story, Peter steps out and he starts to walk in the water. And then what happens? He looks at the circumstances. He, he begins to sink, and Jesus immediately rescues him, doesn't he? Now, here is what we often hear in this message. We hear about the faith of Peter, don't we? We just need to have the faith of Peter. Peter's faith failed. It failed. He 
he didn't succeed. He failed. And what does Jesus do in his failure? I'm going to rescue you. That, for me, is the most significant thing. In the midst of my failures, my king says, I will rescue you. Amen? I don't deserve it. I've just messed up. And the Savior says, I'm going to rescue you. Immediately, Jesus takes him and picks him up and puts him in the boat. Notice what Jesus doesn't do. He doesn't go, oh, well, Peter, bye. Do any of you guys want to try next? Honestly, it's like, about like Titanic. Let, let's be honest. There was enough room in that raft for, for Leo to get on beside her. Let's just admit it, it's true. She was like, oh, there's not, I can't move. It's, a, it's, it's very tight up here. That's not true. She could have scooched over. Leah could have been on a different end to that story. But she's like, just let me take those fingers. Oh, I'm watching you, Rose. I see what you did there. <laughs> Jesus rescued him in spite of his lack of faith. Can we believe that for our lives today? Jonathan Steinmaker, he's a Christian writer and author. I found this um, when I was preparing this message, and it really spoke about this moment. He says, As I reflect on the moments of faith in my life, I can't help but see how many times I trusted God until things started to get worse. I put my faith in him and his word as a Christian should, but when the circumstance that prompted this moment of faith did not immediately improve or started to get more desperate, I took back control that I had released and once again tried to fight my way out of whatever storm I was currently in. It's crazy how easy it can be for us to trust God until he fails to respond to our trust the way we thought he would. We put our trust in him, an act of Bible faith, but reveal when he is slow to act just how thin and conditional our faith is. We start well, but finish never knowing what he could or would have do if we had just continued to trust. Now listen to this end. This is one of the things about genuine faith. It must be given without precondition, or it is more an attempt of manipulation than it is true than it is a true act of confidence in our Creator. Folks, we will fail in our faith. At times, we will fail. We will say, like Peter, is it really you? We will doubt, are you really here? Can you really rescue me? And the goodness of our Savior is yes, yes, yes. Amen. When our faith fails, he is faithful, ever faithful. He is bound by his word and by his character and nature to be good and faithful to his words. We are not. Let's be honest. We are not. So in this story, I, yes, I see Peter took a step of faith, but I rejoice more in the fact that when his faith failed, Jesus still rescued because that's what our God loves to do. Amen? So, Jesus grabs Peter and takes him back into the boat. Didn't put him in dry land. Took him back into the boat and immediately calmed the storm, but he was still in the boat. I would be like, I would like dry land right now, Jesus. I'm not comfortable in the boat. I know it's calm, but, you know, I'm still taking my drama mean because there's just a little bit of movement. Get me out of the boat, Lord, on a dry land. Too many times in life, Jesus will not change your circumstance or situation, but he will calm you in the storm. Amen. There are times he will. I have seen him deliver from circumstance and situation, yes. But can I say in my own experience, that is the exception, not the rule. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's with you. Though the circumstance or situation you're in, financially, family, whatever it might be, health, does not change 
by what you see, the storm within can be calmed because he'll rescue you. Amen? Because he delights to do that. When they got back in the boat, I reckon there was a conversation that goes a bit like this. Oh, this happened before. Didn't remember? Because if you go to Matthew 8, there's another story about them being in a boat. And they're on the sea and there's a storm. But in that story, Jesus is in the boat with them. And they turn to Jesus and they say, do you not even care? And they wake him up. And he's like, calms the storm. So I reckon, because that would be pretty memorable to me. I reckon there was probably like, do you remember this happened before? Uh Uh-huh. Let's not mention it. Let's keep it quiet. There's a thread, disciples. There's a thread running here. In Matthew 8, they're in the boat in a storm. Jesus is with them. And their concern is, do you even care what's happening to us? And he calms their storm. In Matthew 14, our story, they're in a storm. He comes towards them and they say, is it really you? Doubt in both cases. Do you really care? Is it really you? And in both cases, he rescues them. He takes them out of the chaos. He calms the storm. In spite of their lack of faith. How good is our God? How good is our God to us? He sees right through us. He sees our failings. And he's like, and I'm still going to rescue you because I love you. Amen. Those of us who follow Jesus for some time, we know this is how it so often goes in life. I've followed Jesus for over 30 years. And there have been times I have said, do you even care? Do you see what's happening in my family? Do you see this circumstantial situation? Are you really you? And in spite of my failings in faith, he has never failed us. Never failed us. Very rarely has he taken us out of the boat. (laughs) But he's calmed the storm within. He's given peace that made no sense. He's given peace where there should be no peace. Because that's what the Prince of Peace does. Amen. So this morning, as we begin to wrap up, what's happening in our story? A group of disciples follow obediently the words of Jesus, get in the boat, go to the other side. They journey and a storm comes out of nowhere. And in the midst of that storm, they try probably to save themselves and it doesn't work. And the Lord comes and in spite of failed faith, rescues them and calms their storm. I don't know this morning what you're walking through. As I said, some of you may be walking through a crisis, a faith issue, chaos, some sort of storm in your life. Some of you may have just come out and you're rejoicing in the fact that it's calm. But we all know, for those of us, whether you follow Jesus or not, you're going to face these issues in life. And I said at the start, all I wanted us to do this morning was to remember, Christian, what do we do in the midst of these moments? And what do we see here is the goodness of a God who says, whether you think I care whether you think I'm present, whether you think who I am is really who I am, I'm there. Because I am the good God and I am with you in everything you're walking through. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to pray through a couple of scriptures now because we need to hold on to truth in the midst of the storm. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at two scriptures and we're going to see how they can speak to us in this moment as anchors. Because here's the thing about scripture, it's true whether you feel it or believe it. Ah, it doesn't change it, it's truth. It's always true whether I like it or I don't like it, I feel it or I don't feel it, I believe it or not. Ah, it doesn't change its status, 
It's truth. So here's the first scripture. Many of us know this one. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. That could be read, trust in the Lord with all of your heart when the doctor says something else. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart when finances seem to be going everywhere but the right way. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart when it seems like your kids are walking away from Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart when what you read or see causes anxiety. You see, the first line is God, the second line is us, isn't it? So this morning or this afternoon, I want to encourage you. Get it on a post-it note, put it in a mirror, in your bathroom, wherever. It's not a mantra, it's truth. We don't repeat it to make it true. It is true. But we hold on to it when we feel it and when we don't. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your understanding. And the second one is one of my favorites. It's Psalm 121. It's the opening verses in Psalm 21. I look up to the mountains. I like the hills. I look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Because so often when we're going through the hard things in life, where does our head go? It goes down. So can I encourage you this morning, lift your head. Lift your head. Look up and see. Where does your help come from this morning? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm going to ask us to close our eyes and bow our heads, and we're going to pray those scriptures. I'm going to say the line, and in your, where you're just sitting, just say it aloud after me, okay? Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Psalm 121 says, From where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, God, we thank you for the truth we see in this story and in Matthew 8 as well, God, that you are faithful, you are good, you are trustworthy, you are our rescuer, no matter what we're going through. So Lord, this morning, we just commit it all to you, God, you are trustworthy. In spite of our failings, in spite of our lack of faith at times, that doesn't change your faithfulness or your goodness. So whatever we're walking through, God, would we hold on to these words? Because you're a good God. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe these are new words to you and maybe you're attracted to the fact that someone else can be in charge of your life. If that's you this morning, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, would you just raise your hand? if you would like to follow Jesus. Just gonna give it a moment. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're just grateful that we know that God, in the midst of the storms of life, we can have an anchor, we can have a hope, and it's you. So no matter what we're going through, God, we give it to you. We give it to you, Lord, because you're a good and faithful God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, folks. It was a privilege to bring the word this morning. 